Hey everybody, this is Redhead Goes Healthy and this is day one of my 21 day reset mind, body and soul challenge. this challenge feel free to watch the video that I posted yesterday but I am on track to do a 21 day challenge for myself where I tackle my mind my body and my soul so I just want to get right into today this is an accountability video did I hit all of the goals am I going to hit all the goals I'm filming this in the afternoon so it's sort of in the middle of the day but let's start with my mind Okay, so I want to not only read 10 pages a day, but I also want to, you know, pay attention to what I'm reading. And for me, that means I take notes. So as a reminder, I'm reading The Way of Integrity. It's not called The Power of Integrity, it's called The Way. The first thing that she explains is what she means by integrity. And integrity, I think, can be a loaded word. So she's very clear what she means by integrity is being whole, mind, body, and soul. So that's the reason why I picked this book. Uh, but integrity from the Latin word just means intact. So what does that mean to be intact? To be a person of integrity, a person who feels like they are whole, that they are aligned with their true selves. We feel totally present to the moments of our lives and we also feel this sort of inexplicable joy or happiness. And she makes a really good point. She says that most of us, you know, if someone asked us like, how's your life? Like if I asked you, how is your life? you might respond and say, it's fine, it's just fine. Like, it's not spectacular, but it's not terrible. It's just fine. And her response to that is like, no, it can be better. It doesn't have to just be fine. You can actually make your life better if you follow the way of integrity. So she also goes on to say that part of what holds us back from living uh, the way of integrity is culture. So she talks about how there's this difference between nature and culture. You know, it's the famous like nature versus nurture debate. She says that we each have a true nature. We each deep down know who we truly are. But then when we're born into this world, culture gets in the way of our true selves. And by culture, she just means social standards. She means expectations that maybe your family placed upon you on, at, at a young age. I know for me, I am, I'm definitely a people pleaser. And I think that just had to do with where I sort of sought validation as a child and where I was rewarded for like doing good work, getting good grades. I really found that a lot of my own self-worth was put into, you know, accomplishing things and reaching goals. And then I became a people pleaser. I think I've gotten myself into a little bit of a, of a deep pit of people pleasing where I don't know who I am sometimes and I will agree with people. I won't stand up for myself sometimes because it feels better to be a people pleaser than it does to actually assert who I am. And so that's, that's another reason why I really want to read this book because I want to learn who I really am and assert those boundaries and not be afraid of um, disappointing people. So she, she says this really bold sentence um, that I want to take you all along on the journey. She says, so if you're ready to abandon suffering, embrace your true nature and experience the joy you know you're meant to feel, let's begin. It's really exciting. And then uh, how she's going to do this is also kind of fascinating. Uh, for those of you who are literature people, she's using the structure of Dante's The Divine Comedy 
which is actually another reason why I got this book because I teach that in one of my classes. And so what, how she's doing this is really fascinating. She's beginning with the same kind of structure that Dante lays out in the Divine Comedy. So we begin with the dark wood of error. And she says, this is a metaphor for uh, misalignment. So all of us who are struggling to find like integrity in ourselves, we need to start at the very beginning, this sort of dark wood of confusion, misalignment, our natures are not aligning with like our true selves. Um, so this part is gonna be, I imagine, a little painful. And then it gets worse. <laughs> then we're going to hell. The next phase of the Divine Comedy is the Inferno. And here she says that we're gonna find the parts of ourselves that are suffering. Uh, she calls it your inner hell. So all those demons that have prevented you from kind of finding who you really are, what's holding you back. This is going to be the inferno part of it. And then you get to purgatory, which is a cleansing, healing, where we're actually, she says, going to go through integrity cleanses, which just means, I'm hoping, that we are going to be able to find out who our true selves are, how to align ourselves with that, and then how to sort of cleanse ourselves from all of the things that make us less of who we are. And then of course, finally, you get paradise or heaven. So yeah, that, those are my uh, first 10 pages for today. I am excited to get to heaven. Let's talk about my body. And then finally, my soul, this is me meditating. If you wanna join me meditating, I'm gonna leave the full five minutes and you can follow along. Hello and welcome to Peloton Meditation. My name is Cody Rigsby. You are joining me for a five minute patience meditation. Whew, I know patience can be a hard pill to swallow because we want immediate results especially in our fitness journey or in our goals. But today we're gonna to take things slow. We're gonna be in our body and we are going to meditate on the benefits of being in the moment, trusting the process and allowing the journey to take its, to take its moment in our, in our life. Before we get started, let's make sure that we're set up for success. Sit on top of two yoga blocks, uh, blanket, hips are nice and square, shoulders back, head up high. You can sit like this. You can sit on a chair, make sure that your feet are grounded, however feels comfortable to you. I'm also going to close my eyes. You can join me or you can keep them open. Let's go ahead and close our eyes together. Take a few breaths. We're not forcing them, but just following that inhale and that exhale. Letting every breath be a moment that nourishes you and brings in a state of calm and relaxation. Know that if you get lost today in thoughts, it's okay. You can always come back to the breath, but know that getting lost is part of the process and just to trust that process. We think about the goals, or the things that we want, kind of see just a beginning point and an end point. So much of us wants to rush past that middle part and we want to see the result. We don't want to reap the benefit.
but it's patience and a practice of being present in the journey that really creates the skills and the change of mindset that is the real success of any journey that we take on. And without rolling up our sleeves and doing the work and weathering any storm, we're not gonna really see those benefits. We're not gonna feel the change. Remind yourself to trust the process and remind yourself that feeling uncomfortable means that change is on the horizon. Sitting in this space is that practice of perseverance. Maybe even feeling uncomfortable in this space reminds you that in your other goals and your other journeys, that you have the resilience to sit in uncomfortable spaces. So continue to sit in this space, in uncomfortable spaces, with confidence, with strength, resilience, know that what you're going to take from this journey is going to get you on the other side of that goal. Root yourself in that resilience and that strength and that power. Breathe in through the nose. Exhale out through the mouth. One more nice deep breath in through the nose. And on in this exhale, start to open your eyes. Let in the benefit of that meditation. And stay rooted in that foundation of resilience and strength. Okay, we did it. We made it to the end. And now I'm going to go through my checklist that I made. Okay, so using my uh, remarkable... These are a checklists, a PDF I created of all of the daily goals for Sunday, July 17th. My weight this morning was 182.4. I successfully read 10 pages of a book. Uh, I closed my move ring and the final countdown or the final amount was 750 and the total calories burned was 2400. So check. I hit that water goal pretty easily, so I'm really proud of myself for that. I followed a regular day, and calories consumed is 1780, check. Uh, meditated for five minutes, check. And I will check this right now.